Oh, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to uh, the next question in the series, Ask the Artist. And this question comes from uh, Evelyn Pino on Facebook. So thank you for sending this in, Evelyn. Uh, this is a technical question. So I haven't had many of those. Uh, do you add anything to your enamel paints? Uh, well, for those of you who may or may not know, I use enamel paint, um, which I don't think is that widespread in its use, partly because if you're using it properly, then uh, it's quite difficult to work with and uh, it will kill you. <laughs> well, the ones I have anyway uh, will. Um, yeah, mine's uh, quite a special thing and I've, uh, I've now developed it to my own recipe, which I've been successfully using now for about three or four years. We're going to go into my paint pod, actually, to answer this question. So it's going to be a bit of noise now. and I'm not quite sure how the, um, the camera device will get on. But anyway, let's go in. <clears throat> right, let's see how we get on. Still with me? Excellent. Right, let's see if I can go in this bit. I've already pre-opened it, so let's go in. Right, so uh, we're inside the pod. Uh, this is a sealed containment pod where I do the painting. Uh, it looks a bit like something out of the X-Files that would probably pop up in the Mojave Desert when there's an alien infestation or something, but uh, it's quite a cool space and it's bespokely made for the building. Anyway, that doesn't answer the question, so I'll get on with it. Yes, what do I add to my enamel paints? Well, I've got a series of around about 20 different chemicals. Uh, which are locked away in a cupboard outside. Um, some of those are latex derivatives because that alters the behaviours of how the paint flows. I've got a number of chemical uh, dispersants, uh, which make the paint sort of uh, dissolve. They set off a chain of chemical reactions in the paint. I've got extenders to keep it liquid, and I've got retarders, which will dry it out more quickly. Then there's a couple of gloss enhancers, and then I've got the opposite, which will turn them into a matte and a semi-gloss paint. I've got a couple of three which are caustic soda derivatives, um, which I don't really talk about because that usually ends in fire or smoke on a number of occasions. Uh, but the biggest single thing is a series of different thinning compounds. Now, my paints are, by their very nature, um, quite uh, thick uh, paints. So what I have to do, I have to thin them down um, really before I get going on anything. And then I even have a period of time where I might have to wait maybe 24 hours um, for the, that thinners really to take proper effect inside the paint and go for the consistency in the field that I want. It's, it's a bizarre thing and I can't really explain it, but it just, just works. Um, so yeah, so I hope that answers the question. Um, yeah, so around about with all that lot together, I think it's 20 or 21 chemicals now that I can add to it. I mean, it's pretty nice as it is, but yeah, that's, um, that's what I do to my enamel paints. So uh, they, they are quite a specialist item, but I have to, just say that I paint in this pod um, because I have to contain all the vapours. If I don't, then I'm breathing in all the vapours inside the building and um, that's in the past before I really understood it. it made me incredibly ill, so I don't do that kind of stuff anymore. Anyway, I hope that answers the question. If you've got any more, please send them to info at suarez.co.uk and I'll do my best to answer them as soon as I can. See you on the next one.